right, well, I'm going to ask by um, start by asking. Sorry, Jaya. Whether did the team have any apprehensions uh, when the, when you were approached about a documentary being made? Was there ever any uh, possibility that you thought maybe this wasn't the best idea? Um, we were told that uh, some people were going to be filming for a documentary, and um, we were told also not to pay any attention to the cameras. So that's what we pretty much did, and half the time we didn't even realize they were filming. And uh, do, do you think that the the documentary sort of helped mm. the success that the, the team had? Do you think that having people there watching was a kind of nice boost to the players and to yourself as well, to sort of know that this was all being documented for good? Um, uh, to be honest, when they first started uh, filming, I thought um, they were here to make a mockery of the team. Um, uh, when you look at the history, 31-0 loss against Australia, and I thought that was uh, mainly what the film was about, and um, turned out to be a really good film. <laughs> and uh, uh, Thomas, why did you why did you take this job? What was it that enticed you into into this? Well, I think I think at any stage of of a coach's career, but especially in the latter stages of your career, you look at new challenges, new opportunities. Um, as a Dutchman, I was born and raised in, in the Netherlands. Uh, we love to travel, we speak our languages, we embrace new culture. So when I looked at this tiny island, American Samoa, and, and a region I've never been to, uh, from a personal standpoint, I was attracted to, uh, to that. From a professional standpoint, being able to manage a, a team through World Cup qualifying is, is something special as well. So um, ranked last in, in FIFA, 31 to nothing. There was a lot of uh, a pretty interesting side stories that uh, that allow me to say this is a unique, unique opportunity that I have to take with both hands. And I did and ran with it. And um, Mike, Steve and, and Christian, the filmmakers, the producers uh, were there already and were very professional and, and not intrusive and, and were attracted to the island for the same reason I was. They continued to play under great adversity, not one in 10 years, a decade, uh, scored only two goals and given up 292 against. So for them to continue to play against all odds, they must really truly love the game, which they, mm -hmm. which they did. And it allowed me to rekindle uh, the game the way I played it when I was young, the passion and, and, and as a bunch of amateurs to, to go there and, and continue to, as I said again, play under a great set of adversity was just very refreshing, pure and, and very holistic. Because, I mean, this, this story, it should translate, well, I mean, it should, I mean, it does translate to, to the big screen and cinema so well, because it's almost that sort of inherent story of the underdog, isn't it? it? It certainly is. I mean, if you look at the history of this, uh, this, this country, when they uh, finally got approved by FIFA and, and look at the 31 nothing loss against Australia, which is the worst ever in the history of the game, uh, you look at the goals for and against, uh, never scored a goal in, in official qualifying uh, competition. It, it truly is a great story of the underdog, but there's a lot more to it. As Jaya illustrates here, she's a Fafa Fina, uh, which is very much uh, uh, an, uh, the norm, the culture in, in, in Oceania, in, in, in that region. Uh, something that we in the West don't see very often. There's inclusivity, there's respect, uh, they embrace uh, uh, that kind of culture. Uh, which is very refreshing and nice to see as well. We don't see that in the male-dominated football society in the West very often. So uh, it translates into family, it translates into respect, it translates into something very, very special that, that non-footballing people will enjoy as well and, and, and get something really out of it. And it touches the soul and the heart. Uh, and Jaya, to sort of lead on from that, I mean, you went to Hawaii, didn't you? I mean, they were less acceptant, I imagine, than they are in, in American Samoa. Um, yeah, it's sad because Hawaii has such a similar culture to um, Samoa, but uh, there's been so much influence in, in Hawaii being uh, the a state of the United States of America, and um, the stereotypes have played into the culture, uh, being it prostitution or drug use and abuse, and um, anyone who's trans is sort of um, seen as connected with those two things. and. Um, being an athlete, uh, I, I tried out for the University of Hawaii soccer team and um, halfway through the warm-up I was asked to go home because the coach didn't want to put his team in an uncomfortable position without even letting me showcase what I was uh, capable of. Did you, ever, did you ever think about quitting football? Were you always very sort of determined to, to get back into it? Um, I always, my number two passion is um, sock is football. Um, my first passion would be the performing arts, dance concentration, which was my major. But um, 
soccer has a special uh, part in my life because um, I grew up playing. It was the first sport that I played uh, while I was in private school. And it sort of stuck with me um, because I was able to play in a mixed team when I started. And seeing girls play just as tough as the guys did in my team kind of made me hooked to the sport. And, and uh, do you both get emotional watching the film back? Have you watched it back? We've seen it now for the third time. We were invited yesterday by the FA. We were at Wembley. Mm -hmm. um, Graham Lasso was there and very gracious in hosting us. He went through his own trials and tribulation when he played, obviously. So it, it played well into the message that the FA is sending in, in, in general. And, and, and yes, every time I see the movie now, it was the third time, as I, as I said, uh, there's something that catches my eye. There's something that, that makes me emotional. something that makes me uh, uh, choke a little bit. Um, uh, as I said again, it's it's just a wonderful, wonderful movie about uh, the underdog, but about life in general, about acceptance, about respect, about all the things that, that, that should be important in life and are being overlooked and very uncommon, as I said again, in, in, in normal society and especially in the footballing world. Thank you so much for your time today. Much appreciated. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank Thank you. you. Yeah. Uh -huh.